And there you have it. One of the many important dominoes for the Baltimore Ravens has officially fallen uh, with them hiring Todd Munkin, uh, who has been the Georgia offensive coordinator, Georgia Bulldogs offensive coordinator uh, for the past three seasons. And then in the past two seasons, led them to national championships. So, okay. Can he bring an NFL national championship to the Baltimore Ravens? Can he bring an NFL national, national championship offense to the Baltimore Ravens? It's all to be determined. Um, but Ravens finally knock it out. They finally knock it out. Um, so no Dave Canales, no Brian Johnson, no Eric Bieniemy. They are all off the list. And, and it's funny because the the same day, literally right after it was announced that um, and I, I mean timing is everything. Could this be coincidence? It could be. It could be. But literally, like not even ten minutes after it was announced officially that Washington is interviewing Greg Roman, uh, the Ravens announced that they were hiring uh Todd Monken. So. One offensive coordinator gone, uh, and the next offensive coordinator in. Um, Jameson Hensley uh, had a very interesting stat uh, for Todd Munkin. Um, he said, uh, Munkin, who's 57 years old, uh, helped guide Georgia to back-to-back -to -back national championships. And yes, that's something that uh, a lot of people have talked about. He, he helped them get to two back-to-back. -back. Like, it's hard enough to get to one. But he helped them get to two back-to-back -back national championships. So he was like, man, going to that first one was so nice. You know what? We got to do it twice. But then this part, that, and that part is great. That part is amazing. But then this part, I was like, oh, okay. It said his offense averaged 501.1 yards and 40.7 points per game last season. Now, I know that's college. College is so different from the NFL. It's so much different because the, the, the difference between the best college team and the worst college team, it's not even close. Like, I, I can't even fit the difference in the camera. I could try to, but it, it's just way off. The difference between the best NFL team and the worst NFL team is a, a lot closer than you may think. Um, so it's just a whole nother level. But but with those numbers, like, that's a, that's a pretty high average. Even for it being college ball, that's that's excellent. That's a lot of yards for 501 yards per game. 500 yards per game? That's a lot. That's five football fields of yards per game. You know the football field, 100 yards. Anyway, um, the points, uh, over 40 points a game, uh, that's, that's amazing too. So now, all right, however you feel about this higher, um, I, I, one thing I have been hearing, I've been hearing that, uh, I've been seeing a lot of people say, oh, oh, Mandrew, Mandrew's about to eat now. Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, they said they're getting ready to eat now. Because apparently, I got to see it for myself, but apparently um, there have been people saying that he loves his tight ends. He loves some tight ends. So we'll see. I mean, last offensive coordinator, he loves them tight ends too. Um, but yeah, now it's all about seeing as believing. Um, how is this offense going to work? Uh, what is he going to specialize in? Um, I do One thing I do like about it um, is that it's an outside hire. Even though he used to be Brown's offensive coordinator like a couple years back. But anyway, he is an outside hire. And that was one of my biggest hopes uh, when it came to an offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens this season was that they bring in somebody from the outside. Now... He could have whatever scheme he wants. He could draw up whatever play his heart desired. He could have the best vision in the world for the Baltimore Ravens offense. He could have all that stuff. But now it's up to John Harbaugh. It's up to John Harbaugh to really allow him to have a say-so. Really allow him to do his thing. Now, are you going to tell him, like, hey, Munkin, hey, great, great job on getting a job, congrats. This is what you're going to be doing. You, we want to run the ball, and that, that's, our, that's our biggest focus. Is their biggest focus still going to be to run the ball? I mean, John Harbaugh did say in the, the, the presser, the end of season presser, he did say that's, that's still going to be their, their identity. That's still who they are. He said they're, they're running team. They're going to run that ball. Uh, and we don't expect the running game to go anywhere. But 
the biggest thing now is the passing game. I mean, that's been the biggest thing that we all been talking about for years. When are they going to take this passing game to another level? When is it going to happen? Because there just simply aren't any excuses left. There's no excuses. Yeah, Ravens have dealt with injuries, and they've been unfortunate. Ravens, um, but they also dealt with lack of depth, uh, lack of involvement with the guys that they even have uh, at, at the wide receiver position. Um, and just lack of positive consistency in the passing game. So now it's up to not only Todd Munkin, but it's up to John Harbaugh. It's up to them to really like up this passing game a lot. And honestly, this should have been this should have been something they did a long time ago. The NFL is is changing. It's changed so much, but it's been a a, a passing league for years now, man. For years So Ravens uh, I guess better late than never But you gotta catch up Should've been working on catching up Years ago But alright cool It didn't happen It is what it is You're here now How how are you gonna make this offense work? That's so important So I'm excited to see how it goes I'm, I'm excited for this uh, Possible new direction uh, Of the Baltimore Ravens On offense um, Greg Roman had been around since uh, 2018 First he was like the running backs and tight ends coach I think then 2019 he became the offensive coordinator Man they did it They did their thing uh, And he was his offensive coordinator since 2019 So 2019, 2020, 2021, 22 So he was offensive coordinator for four years So shout out to Greg Roman Whatever he has going on next Wish him well Hope he does a, an excellent job in whatever his role is next And whoever that role is with uh, but now it's monkin time. It's monkin time. It's monkin time. I like that. It's monkin time. So we saw um, last year, we saw uh, a, an injection of youth, um, an injection of some sort of new blood into the Ravens defense with Mike McDonald. And I say sort of new blood because, I mean, he had just, he was only going away for, for, for a year. He was only gone for a year when he went to Michigan just for that one year to be defensive coordinator, and then he came right back because he was on the Ravens before. So he, it ain't really new blood, but I guess it's young blood. So he could sort of take some things that Wink taught him, and we saw some things that Wink taught him show out, but, and he could sort of tweak it. And he did that. And Mike McDonald, he had his highs. Mike McDonald, he also had his lows. Um, he had some things that they did great. He had some things that they could definitely improve on. Um, but overall, he did his thing. Now, you have an injection, not a young injection, uh, but an injection of new life uh, into the offense. So what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Uh, is this going to be an offense where not only the tight ends, they can be happy, but the receivers can be happy? Can this offense turn around the Baltimore Ravens and their rep, their reputation that they have at the wide receiver position? Because we know, like, this this has been something for years. It ain't no new thing that receivers don't want to go to Baltimore and play. No, that's old news. Everybody knows that. I mean, it's like you 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 get a good receiver, and he wants out. He said, I'm out of here. <laughs> get me going. Trade me. So um, it, it's very important. Like, this this year, uh, Munkin has a lot of pressure on him, A lot of, regardless of who the quarterback is. Whether it's Lamar Jackson, whether it's somebody else, Munkin has a lot of pressure on him because all eyes are going to be watching. All right, are, are they, are they going to change? Are they going to be better? Are they going to score points? How's the red zone offense going to be? How's the play calling going to be? Is it going to be predictable? Are we going to be able to see what's coming from three miles away with our eyes closed? Or are we going to be like, oh, okay, all right, it's Munkin time. So, so much is, is still to be determined. And how much of the old offense are you going to keep, if any at all? I'm sure you're still going to have some things that you keep, possibly. But now you got to implement this new system. So, hey, you got your running backs. You got a lot of your offensive line. Not necessarily all of it right now. But you got your tight ends. Uh, you have some receivers. I'm sure you don't have all the receivers that are going to be on your team. But now you can start really installing this offense, teaching this offense to the, to the new guys, to the old guys. 
Um, but now the big question is at quarterback. The, the, again, this was the first domino. This was the first domino that needed to fall. Offensive coordinator. So it's like, bam, all right, they got the offensive coordinator taken care of. So what's next? What's next? Is Lamar Jackson going to be signed? Is he going to stay? Is this something or somebody Lamar Jackson approves of? Is Lamar Jackson going to be like, oh, yeah, let's go. All right, all right, let's really make this deal happen now. It's to be determined. Because, again, we don't know the status of the contract talks. We don't know how they're going. We don't know what's going on with them. But it, it's just a matter of time. We're just waiting it out now. Just waiting it out. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and that's that. Uh, so shout out to Tyler Monken uh, for being the Ravens' newest um, offensive coordinator. Uh, and I, I do hope that he, he does really, really good, man. Because that would mean the Ravens did really, really good. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man, because we just, with the offense, it's, it's crazy because it's, it's like it's not, it's like it's not far off, but it's far off all at the same time. That, that, that's, that's how I felt. It's like you will see glimpses and then those glimpses will be taken away. It's like whenever we, we will see a glimpse, Ravens offense will be like, oh, nope, close your eyes. Shut your eyes. They will cover our eyes up. They will cover our eyes. Because they'll be like, no, 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 no. We don't want you to see that. We don't want you to see a glimpse of, of hope in the passing game. We don't want you to see that. Running game, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And now um, one thing, another thing that I, I was just thinking about, with this offense now, especially the passing game, because, again, that's, that's the biggest thing, the passing game. That's the biggest thing, in my opinion. That's the, that's the biggest issue Ravens need to get through, get past, get over. That's the biggest thing. Um, now, with the volume, again, how, are you, how is the volume of passes going to be? Because with Ravens' current passing game, well, I guess their past passing game, um, the volume was so low. So if a quarterback misses a pass, if a receiver drops a pass, if, if, if it, there's an incompletion, interception, if there's whatever, then it gets blown up so much. It's so much bigger because the Ravens pass so little. There are so far and few opportunities for the passing game to get into a rhythm. That's another question. How will you get your passing game into a rhythm? Are you just going to come out deep shot, deep shot, deep shot, deep shot, everybody run down the field? Everybody? You're going to have some shorter stuff. You're going to find different ways to get different guys involved. Now, another big question, too. How are you going to establish your playmakers? What's it going to be? How, how are you going to, are you going to play guys to their strengths? That, and that's big because we've seen it so much where guys are not played to their strengths. How are you going to do that? So, again, a lot, a lot of questions to be answered. And we really won't really get the answers until i say about week five six of the season of the regular season because that's when we'll be able to see it we'll, we'll see some little stuff here in the preseason a little bit here and there um and even it we get start to get answers in week one but real answers i think would be week five or six because week one is brand new everything's brand new that's like when everything is real uh and they could go off for a monster game or they could have a terrible game but then week two week three Week four, week five, week six, then we'll start to see whatever their consistency is, whether it's a good consistency or it's a bad consistency. Hopefully it's a great consistency. Um, so, again, shout out to Munkin, and let's hope this Ravens offense really gets turned around. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like um, Eric Bieniemy, uh Dave Canales, uh, the Vikings, QB coach, and anybody else who the Ravens were possibly interested in, just like with them when it comes to being in the runnings for offensive coordinator, we out. <laughs>